Okay, this is how I actually feel when people talk about. So there are a few words that I really get upset about. So data difference is one, big data, digital transformation, cloud. Everybody talks about this like it's a hell of a big deal. Um, there are a lot of young people here. Any of you are, if you are 32 years old or younger, there's a specific reason for it. Because I've been in the data business for 32 years. I've been doing data driven. So if you are in a company and say, this is really, really cool, we do this, you are 32 years too late. <laughs> this is not new. I'm, seriously, this is not new. Okay? The, the good news is, because it's not new, the practice is very, very established. All the problems that you can possibly face has been solved. It is published. It is proven. You don't have to spend two cents on research. You just have to do the damn thing. The trouble, no one takes the time to do the stuff. So the practice and technology has changed. There are new tools, uh, data becomes a lot more voluminous, but literally the practice is proven. If anybody takes the time to Google something, you will be the smartest guy on earth, investors will come to you. So today we're just going to talk about how this thing is not new and how people think it's this small thing. It is not this thing. It is this thing. Yeah? And so the data scientists will not save your skin. <laughs> okay? So you need to put things into perspective and then hopefully you can say, hey, actually, we've got all the moving parts. We just need to figure out how to do this thing right. So, okay, this is the actual title. Are you ready? Um, let's talk about expectations. If you, are, if you are hiring, say about 15, 20 years ago, if you're hiring, say, middle management, you see a resume. And one of the skill sets there, someone says, Microsoft Office applications. It used to be very impressive. Huh? <laughs> if you see a CV today and someone says, Microsoft Office application, you would really want to meet the guy because you see what an idiot looks like. <laughs> I'm, so expectations, that people expect you to know certain things. Okay? It's like, if I'm in Seoul and I want to have barbecue, do I actually ask for Korean barbecue? It's already in Korea. No? <laughs> So there are certain expectations uh, that people expect you to have. So people expect companies. So if you are starting up a new operation, a new startup, there are certain things that people expect you to know. One of them is things like this. Uh, people expect you to know how to consume data. People expect you to... So when I hire a director of marketing today, I expect the guy to understand what marketing metrics are. I don't expect him to know how to do it. But if he looks at me and say, can you tell me what KPIs are good for marketing? I'm going to slap his face. This is an expectation. Okay? So up front, if you are going to this area, you need to make sure that you already have the capability because customers expect you to know. If you're going to give me a form to fill up and you're going to profile me 32 different ways, and then the day you still send me crap afterwards, I say, but I just told you 32 things about me. Can't you at least have the courtesy to figure out that I don't like ice cream or God knows what. So in our everyday life, uh, we go through this, right? People ask you, so we are very obliging. We fill out the form, we tell them if intimate details, and nothing has changed, you know? So, so, these are, so after a while, customers will lose faith. Investors will look at you and say, these guys are idiots. Huh? Yes, they use the right words, but they can't do basic things, and they don't understand point of impact. And so a lot of, so a lot of, for example, uh, so definitions also change. Uh. For example, you know, for a long time, she mentioned digital a couple of times. Everybody talks about, if you look at media, you look at training, everybody talks about digital marketing. Okay, today, uh, look, is there any marketing without digital? It's just called marketing. The digital is assumed. Just like, you know, the Korean barbecue, you know? and the french fries in Paris. <laughs> so if you will go out there and say, I'm a digital marketing expert, you say, what the hell are you talking about? Because the whole world is digital. Okay, the definition of digital itself has changed. Huh? For the longest time, when people say digital marketing means we move to digital channels. It used to be paper, now it's electronic, it's digital. I send you an EDM. You do know uh, that's not the current definition of digital. Because if you don't, then today, you, <laughs> digital means data. If there's no data, it is not digital. 
The fact that it's on paper, but somehow or other data plays a role. So let's, let's do this test. And if you hear the word, people talk about transformation, digital transformation, the definition is very simple. It's basically your company needs to learn how to really make use of data in every sense of the word. It means also, so when people talk about data, data processing, you always think about big data analysis. People don't think about, if you don't collect the stuff, you can't do analysis. There are a lot of companies out there, big fat companies with hundreds of data scientists, millions of dollars worth of software, and nothing is happening because they just realized that I've got the factory, I've got manufacturing, I don't have raw materials. That's a huge problem. And then now with you know, data protection, PDPA, there are rules huh, in terms of, there's nothing that says you cannot collect, but there are proper ways of collecting. So unless you understand the whole ecosystem, the last mile which the data scientist with a PhD, he's not going to help you because there's nothing for him to play. Or the data is not right. It doesn't represent the real world. So we all take bus. Here's the test. So we all know the, the clear channel panel at the bus stops. There's a whole bunch of them right now, different versions. You have the, the full electronic one. You have the, the paper ones with the NFC thing at the side. Okay, you click it or you touch it, then sometimes it loads a website or God knows what. You have the, the paper one. Have you seen this? So there, there's the paper one with the camera. There's this sign which nobody notices. So if you're standing there looking at the stuff, please don't pick your nose or scratch yourself. <laughs> Because you'll show up on YouTube somehow. <laughs> and then you have the, the new ones that just launched, is the, the, they call it the Play. It's a full touch screen, fully interactive. Okay, which one of these is the least digital? Anybody want to? Sorry? C, paper with camera. Remember my, my definition uh, of digital? Data. Yes. A is a dumb panel. <laughs> it is, no, it is a, like you talk about dumb computers and dumb TVs, now you've got smart TVs. This is a dumb panel. It is electronic. It has no awareness. It has got no freaking idea that someone looking at it and scratching himself. Okay? <laughs> this one has and he can do analytics and say, typically, uh, old men with bald hair like to scratch himself. God knows what. <laughs> That's insights for you. Uh. So, the def so you need to understand. So the definition of digital starts from point of awareness and sensing. So if your organization by design is not designed to be aware and sensing, meaning collect data, then everything down the road is a problem. Uh. This goes to, it, say if you're building a new organization, say if you're a startup, I'm building an organization from scratch. If you're the HR guy, first, first thing you want to figure out is, okay, while we're building this organization, how am I going to do performance management? Not just of people, but process, governance, and everything else. Because at some point, if you think, we really need to do that, then you, start to, you need to start to organize your company, infrastructure, workflow, processes from the ground up to be sensing. There has to be a way to collect data so you know if people are not following rules. Governance is broken. Performance is an issue. The guy next door is dating our company. God knows what. <laughs> <laughs> because without it, it's going to be really good. Then you go, you end up with, OK, we've got to do self-assessment because there's no other way. And then someone says, yeah, but it's the next best thing. OK, it's a cop out. So definition of digital needs to be recalibrated because until you do it, everybody's going to say, yeah, I'm a digital marketer because I do EDM. <laughs> yes, it's electronic, but there's no sensing. I mean, we all look at uh, augmented reality. Yeah? Remember the IKEA catalog from last year? The piece of paper with augmented reality. Okay, that's paper. Huh? That's digital because every time you scan, it's sensing. It knows who's scanning, it knows where you are, it knows what phone you have, and God knows what else you've profiled. The amount of data, it, whether it, what it does with it, is a different point. But the fact is, it's a sensing ecosystem versus the digital catalog where you just stare at it and do nothing. So let's talk about computers. So if you're going to build 
a data-driven organization. So what does it take? So there are a couple of things that needs to exist. So we just talked about it. It has to be a sensing organization. So a data-driven organization has to start from I am sensing all the time. There is some awareness somewhere. So the sensing creates data. So now I have to be able to ingest the data into my systems, whatever you, whatever you call systems. But think about this. Huh? If, your, if your smartphone is your alarm clock, for example, that means the first thing you do is touch your phone. That's a data point if you haven't figured it out. Where it goes, whether it goes to Apple, Google, or IDA, God knows. But it knows that some of us have to touch the phone 53 times before we wake up. Okay? That's a data point. It has to be ingested. Now we're talking about smart nation. We're talk about, talking about national sensor networks. Talking about smart grid. You do know, think about water knows that you people don't bathe in the morning, which is very bad for you. They know those people who stumble to the toilets in the dark without switching on the light because you are lazy. See, these are, these, these are sensors. So that's the whole idea here. So without the sensors, then nothing happens. But with the sensors, capability will, will develop. That's why the first thing that's actually being put in place as part of Smart Nation is actually the National Sensor Network. Because they figured the big data thing is not going to work without the, the wrong materials. At some point, this is what everybody talks about. So everybody's hyped up here. OK, we, we have all the analytics. We process the data. We, we do analysis. Then what? So we have really, really cool PowerPoints. Uh. It will look like, yeah. And then we all go home, and then business as usual. So nothing, so nothing in the world changes. So this whole thing with data-driven is, unless something in the world changes, uh, there's no ROI. Uh. Because up to this point, we're all spending money. Uh. This is not cheap stuff, uh, and there's no impact. There has to be storytelling. Someone's going to look at this data and figure, ha, huh, every time the MRT breaks down, there's this little spike here. This looks like a business opportunity. Let's pray it breaks down tomorrow and test, see what happens. And then you react. So someone has to translate a data point into some sort of story which makes sense to the business. And then someone has to actually transform your business, something in the business changes, and then magic happens. Uh. Up to this point, without this, literally nothing happens. No one wants to talk about the G word, uh, governance. Uh. Because without governance, this is out of control. Uh. If you think about this, because now, especially if you are getting data from all over the place. So I've got public channels, I've got customers, I've got, I'm doing like 300 surveys a day, Every so we are very creative, so every survey is a different question. So now I've got all these data points. Uh. Then how do we say, so you describe big a certain way. You describe big a certain way. So we all have big businesses. Your big is bigger than my big. <laughs> so it doesn't make sense. Uh. So governance now sets rules, policies, standards. So at least when, we, when you start to, I mean, I'm sure you've been in meetings. Eh? If you are at some point in the corporate world, someone shows a report. We argue about the sanity of the data. No one argues about the fact that, okay, this business is not doing well. It's like, so when you get data from, you pull out on Thursday. You should pull out Friday morning. Because last night there was a bad run. No, this spreadsheet is better. That's what's going to happen if you don't have governance. That means the business doesn't benefit it's all griping about data quality. This is a multi-million dollar problem. A lot of companies get stuck there, and at some point, hiya, spreadsheet. We all know what to do, just pivot it this way, and then life goes on. So let's talk about sensing. If you take a bus, you see this poster. I couldn't find, so the original version of this poster basically tells you that if you tap out too early, you're breaking the law because you are cheating the bus company. They moved on. Huh? Now it's basically they want you to tap out in time, not because of money. Huh? They want the data. You can see there's trans So someone has figured this thing out and say, actually, we don't need the money. Huh? We want the data because I can monetize this stuff. If nothing else, productivity, scheduling. You see transformation. So this is a sign of someone's figuring it out. Okay? If you are a Pokemon hunter, 
the whole Uber grab. These are all sensors. Uh. In disguise, like playthings. By the way, without this, nothing can happen. If you don't play the Pokemon thing, there's no data for them to... I mean, they're making billions. Uh, selling the fact that certain type of people will go out into the middle of the ocean to catch some stupid thing that doesn't exist. <laughs> if you are the marketing guy uh, and say, would it be cool if people will queue up for three nights for product launch, you really want to know who are the idiots that would do it. <laughs> the guy who's out at the ocean catching the Pokemon will do it. Uh, I will pay for those people. That's the business model here. Okay? The same with the Grab. I mean, what's interesting out of this, so, so the, there is a, so Uber and Visa has got a project going on, I think it's in Thailand. So what, what, what they do is they, they look at the, the data from bookings and they figured out that if you're looking for an Uber after 6 p.m. and you're not going home, again, through the app, I know where you live. If you're not heading home, there's a 90 over chance that you're looking for food. That's, it's so trivial. It's there, but you think of the possible. So now, if you're out there looking for Uber, it's after 6 o'clock, and my destination is not home, they're going to serve you uh, content about food destinations where you are headed. And then you can figure out commercial. That's a huge chunk of change. Yeah? I mean, so we all know Uber is bleeding money from the, the car hire thing. But they will make this thing off when someone figures out that actually all this data is, is monetizable through a different way. So this is, but if you're not sensing, so you got to, and data costs money, it's not free. So they're willing to pay for this because now I'll make it somewhere else. Okay. So what, what, what is sensing capability? A lot of people think it's technology, true. Huh? And there, there is a technology play. <coughs> but at the end of the day, you think about all the, the, the play things that we participate in. If the customer experience design is sucky, then you won't play. That means the sensing mechanism doesn't work. There is no data. So if you are if you are out there, say yes. Back to the HR thing. So if you're an HR guy, we're going to build this thing. If you are expecting your employees to every day go in and fill out a survey, people are going to hit you. At some point, they will lie. <laughs> so now your data points are off. So it's not going to work. So yes, there's a technology play, but customer experience design. So this way, a lot of companies get it wrong. They have the technology part right but you don't understand customer experience and so people don't play or people get fatigued or people give up and so now the data gets compromised or not at all and so everything down the road doesn't work so first part get the sensing right and then these are some of the key capabilities ha. so anybody here runs uh, so this is not some financial thing this is what my running watch sees when i run a marathon it's like it knows that others are going to buy, get, get a heart attack really, really soon. <laughs> so we talk about ingestion. Uh, that little thing that you wear, potentially with a heart rate monitor, potentially with a transponder on your feet, uh, it ingests and generates impressive data. Okay? But that's all it is. Uh, we look at these things like, yeah, really cool. Next slide. <laughs> so part of the, the I've sensed, so my watch is a sensor. So I'm addicted. I'm, I'm a sensing addict. For me, tragedy is all dressed up to go for a run and realize that, oh hell, my watch battery is low. For some reason, I cannot run without my running watch. I have no idea why. It's not like I look at the data, but I need to collect the damn thing just for the hell of it. <laughs> and then save it and then delete. <laughs> but at least I got a sensing part, right? <laughs> Okay, so let me g just, just tell you what this data is because the next, we'll talk about it later on. So this is what my running watch is. It, it, it looks very complicated, but it's very trivial, but there are implications. This thing here, so the watch is actually has built into it a pressure barometer. So it's tracking my route, pressure changes. So basically, I just ran up a big hill. This is, oops. This is my heart rate over the period. This is my speed over the period. This is cadence, even tracks the number of times my feet hits the ground and the distance, basically my stride length. And there's a whole lot of stuff. So, there, there, so that from a sensing point of view, 
It's quite amazing technology, and this is not even new. This is like a few years ago. The, the new ones do a whole lot more. Yeah? What you do with it is the magic. Because now it's just it's less cool PowerPoint. Eh? So what does it take to ingest data? So data management is a huge one, of course, because without data management, it's all going to be rubbish. Just like, you no, know, my big is bigger than your big, then there's no benchmarking. But there are specific skills. So again, you, you can, if you just Google data scientists, there are a lot of, these are hard skills. There are a lot of mathematics, a lot of statistics, a lot of technical programming. So these are guys who cut code, the geeky guys with a the PhD. They build amazing product, they spin the data so many ways, and then they visualize the stuff. And you look at it, and then they tell you, today very high. You say, yes, we can tell. <laughs> and it ends there. <laughs> so for, for it to move uh, from today very high to, ooh, that's an interesting business proposition, two things need to happen. This is two points of epiphany, a la Singapore style. Someone has to ask the, why like that question? <laughs> if you think about it, if you just look at data presentation, and everybody just accepts it as it is, and it goes from nothing happens. Uh. All it needs is the first idiot in the room to say, why like that? Uh? Because now it's going to force a reaction. Someone's going to explain storytelling. Uh. I need to tell you why it's like that, how dumb it is, how good it is, cause and effect. And then someone should hopefully look at that and say, then how? Uh? Because now the storytelling moves to recommendation <coughs> and decisions. Without this, you just have fascinating PowerPoint. And unfortunately, today, that's what you have. You have very, very expensive, fascinating PowerPoint because people don't take the effort. So it means now, storytelling. The data scientist has done his job. He's produced this. Unless he's part of the business, embedded, he has no idea what just happened in the business. But he can show you the report, he can spin the data, he can statistically say, okay, there's correlation between this and this and this. But so what? So like in my case, you know, remember I said I just ran up a bloody big hill. Huh? You look at my heart rate, huh? it looks fairly consistent. You're saying, this guy just ran up a big hill, he should be like dying of a heart attack at some point. Huh? So the why like that should be the first question. So far I can tell you because I'm not very motivated. <laughs> Okay? Or I'm probably following this hot chick in a short skirt, uh, and she was really walking, so I figured there's no good reason for me to run any faster. <laughs> God knows what, but that's storytelling for you. Okay? And so if I had a coach, he's going to say, okay, you really need to take this seriously. Then the then how happens. Then he's going to say, okay, we need to put you on performance target. You've got to be focused, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. You see the difference. Uh? It used to be a fascinating chart. Now there is a reason. Same thing here. No? This is my speed and cadence. You see, it's very consistent. Every two and a half k, my speed is very consistent. Every two and a half k, I sort of stop. Uh, if you run a marathon, drink points. Eh? So if you run with water, it will spill. <laughs> so I'm very practical. Don't waste water. I stop and drink. And then I continue. I figured I've got five freaking hours to finish this thing, there's no hurry. <laughs> and then at some point, it looks like I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> so again, why like that? Explanation, never train lah. <laughs> you know, you train 10K, run a 42K race. At some point, it's not sustainable anymore. So now there's storytelling. So again, coach says, then how? So, okay, structured training. God knows whatever the mix. So this is a skill set in itself. Huh? This is very, very missing. This is not something that you can outsource to your data scientist. So usually, oh yeah, before I get that, anybody heard of thick data? No one talks about this stuff. Huh? <coughs> everybody talks about big data. You know, I have a million records. I look at this stuff and say, according to this thing, uh, people with brown hair do this. Oh yeah, very clinical. Thick data is just the opposite. I have very little sample. I have, I'm, I have very, very deep insight. This is where the emotional connection comes in. So go Google this, this lady, uh, Trisha Wang. She, she does a lot of work. She is an anthropologist, technographics, and basically she's the one that told Nokia 
that you guys are going to die if you don't be careful about how she spends like a year as a street vendor selling candies in Vietnam while doing her research. She had 100 records only, extremely ready, and she told Nokia, I know you've got a million records, sample size, this, 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 but this is how people buy phones. And Nokia told her, you've got to be kidding. Now she's telling Nokia, yeah, you've got to be kidding. So thick data is not talked about a whole lot, but this is where it brings a lot of softer, the emotional connections, uh, uh, the, the, the context to what big data shows you. So if you look at this stuff, again, look at big data, but also consider thick data. And so it's a different skill set. Uh. If you look at this, a lot of soft skills, a lot of communications. You have to be able to explain very, very complex things into relevant business ideas for that specific business. So if you're selling this thing to a CFO, it's very different if you're selling this thing to a CMO, very different from selling it to the operations director in the same company. Yeah? So usually, local expert, if you have a willing, capable local expertise, this is where they come in, because they bring with them business legacy. So the data scientist prepares the data. The local expert looks at it and says, ah, yeah, yeah, this is what usually happens when it rains, and this, and this, and this, or there's a problem with supplier, these are telltale signs. That's valuable. Huh? Uh, a, lot of this data, a lot of this don't show up in data points. So this is the salesperson, essentially. And then, this is where something needs to happen. Huh? Transformation. You like my charts, huh? <laughs> Transformation is when you've heard the story, someone's going to say, okay, we need to do this thing differently. We need to stop doing that stuff. We need to stop paying people this much. We need to pay these guys God knows what. Huh? So somewhere in there, Certain competencies, breakthrough thinking is one of them. People who think outside the box, potentially people like you guys. Huh? Young people, people who don't have walls around them, and then ideas, people who have, I've been accused of being very irresponsible with my ideas. We need people like that. Because once you say, you cannot take back. Huh? That means now it becomes somebody's problem. <laughs> but you need people like that, because now it creates a very different organization structure. Uh, of course, there is a lot of change management. Yeah. So, so I, I didn't really say what I do. <laughs> so I'm not a startup like you guys. I, I mean, I work for myself. I left a couple of world by eight years ago. I'm a management consultant. I run a one-person management consulting practice. I do transformation consulting. My clients are the biggest companies on earth. So Apple is a client, uh, IBM, Microsoft. And a lot of time, when they invest in startups, they throw, try to represent the investor. So they throw me to the startups. My job description is usually very simple, adult supervision. That's what my clients say, you are adult supervision. Basically, I sort of meant, we introduce enterprise capabilities to startup. I always say, if you behave like a startup, people will treat you like a startup. So start behaving like a big boy. So we introduce all the rigor, governance, structure, but you're still startup, so you have agility but you have there are times when, and you tell you, tomorrow cannot wear jeans, because huh? we're meeting people who can give us $20 million. So everything has to match. <laughs> so I'm that guy. So usually I sit on the board of a couple of startups, and literally I work with them. And then sometimes I convey their message back to the enterprise. Sometimes I convey the enterprise message back to them. Sometimes I'm the guy who says, I think we should cut our losses and kill these buggers. Huh? Unfortunately, that's part of the thing. So I do a lot of this, change management, and then I push people down this path. Culture experiment. So yes, you behave like big boys, but you have agility to do this. So this is a culture. If you have this, then the data thing works. Uh, because if you don't experiment, because the whole idea with a lot of data driven, sometimes the recommendations that come out of the data is counterintuitive. Uh. That's why we don't this, do this thing. According to the data, we should do this, but it sounds like a bad idea. Are you willing to do it? Because if you trust the data, if you trust your methodology, then it should work. If you think I don't trust the thing, then why do you do it in the first place? Or should we hedge our bets? So that's a, 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 a competency in itself. Huh? And then finally, governance. Huh? I found this by mistake. It's really, really cool. <laughs> 
Governance, in a simple sense, is rules. Uh. Simple illustration, say, I'm not saying this is going to happen. Uh. Say if Facebook one fine day decides that we will start to rank Facebook users by how funny their friends think they are. So Facebook is not going to evaluate you. Facebook is going to read your comments, the comments of your friends. So when people say, ha, 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 LOL. Uh. So four has means something. Three has means something. So at some point, Facebook needs to tell all of us, there are now rules. You cannot anyhow ha ha ha, because it will cock up our measurements. Of course, we will say, what a stupid idea. Then if someone gets really too smart, they say, now we'll have a ha button. That means you, if you want to say ha ha ha, you click three times. <laughs> OK, so you just see what happened. Huh? Governance, well intended. Customer experience design, really sucky, which means sensing is going to fail, no data, the business analytics is just not going to work. Huh? Now someone is going to say, so it's got nothing to do with the technology, huh? think about this. Someone just didn't think through the customer experience design. Overinvestment in technology and every bloody thing, you forget about a human being because I have no time to follow your rules. I say ha 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 as much as I want. So this is a simple example of governance. So unless you have robust governance, a lot of your data driven is going to be very, very subjective. Credibility, the moment people lose credibility with your practice, no one's going to trust any more PowerPoint that comes out of you or the Excel chart or anything else. So this may be a bit of an overkill, but it doesn't, so you understand the whole concept of governance, risk management and compliance, GLC, if you're an internal auditor, compliance person, you don't need one of those guys, but it helps to have someone who is capable in some of those things. So, 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 I'm, so I'm a certified GLC professional. I don't practice this stuff as a consulting thing, but I bring it into the data practice. So when we deliver information strategy, it's 100% GLC compliant. So the, the governance structure that we put in will pass through any internal audit, compliance officer, any regulator, it makes a big difference. So you want to think about that. If you think your, your data practice is going to support critical businesses, then you want to make sure that the governance is robust so people don't question a lot of the background. Okay. So now, so we, now we've figured out, huh? we've got skills. Culture is huge. Huh? As a consultant, so I love looking at maturity models because it's not about how much you like it. <coughs> You can ask us, is your company mature enough to deal with this new thing? This is huge. Because eh? if the company as a culture is not mature, and you really want to do this thing, then you've got to stick your neck out really, really long because someone's going to get killed. Eh? So, <laughs> so some sort of, and you, you can, there's so many of this stuff. I like this one because it's granular enough. It's simple. So if you are in an existing company, if today you guys, people struggle agreeing about which spreadsheet should we use, then you know, uh, recommendation model is not going to work because no one's going to trust this thing. And this whole thing will be optimization, automated uh, AI, not going to work because you can't even agree on the spreadsheet. Okay? So again, just having the maturity model gives you an idea of how far you are. And if you're the guy driving, you think how difficult your life is going to be. It's a damn good sanity check. Okay? Some, again, not rocket science, but fairly obvious attributes. Uh, as an organization, I mean, you want to be curious. So you're always looking for evidence. You're always proving. For example, if you're a marketer, someone runs a campaign. Campaign didn't go very well. Zero is a valid answer. It's not a good answer, but it's a valid answer. I don't know. It's not a valid answer. Simple things like that. Huh? So if you cannot measure, we have a problem. Huh? Because you'll do it again. Huh? But if you know it doesn't work, okay, just stop doing the stuff. Huh? Um, you got to be active. So looking around, looking for answers, a lot of discovery, understand uncertainties, because there will always be risk. This is what I just talked about. Huh? The recommendations from the data could be counterintuitive. So how brave are you? Or how risk averse? Or how do we mitigate in case we get it wrong? Um, agile, be transparent. This last one. Huh? There's a lot of maturity here. 
You know they say, no, if you got too much IQ and too little EQ, then you are an asshole. <laughs> this is that, huh? just, be here, just because you have the data. Sometimes you want to be careful with it. So, you know, with, with, with great power comes with great responsibility. Who said that? Spider-Man, right? <laughs> so, but these attributes hopefully gives you a nice balance. You know when to act, when to mitigate, and when to, I think we just go with the flow and then save it for another battle sometime. If not, you'll, you'll die too fast. I'm finishing, huh? And then finally, hopefully you appreciate, this is not a one thing. It is an ecosystem. It's a huge ecosystem. Let's just build this out. Let me talk about this. Huh? So if you are the, the end user company and you want to do this, then you need to have access. You don't have to own all these capabilities, but you need to have access to the various capabilities, whether it's a vendor. Best case scenario, you've got one guy who can do all this stuff, but usually it's a bit difficult. So it could be a vendor, it could be academia, but unless you have the full ecosystem, it's not going to work. You know? It comes from, from information architecture, upfront design to connect. We talk about governance, data management. So there's a lot of hygiene factor that needs to be put in there. Because if not, again, your data becomes very questionable. Then we all know this, all the data sciences and analytics, the storytelling, talked about this, and then the transformation. If you are, if you are a startup, tech startup, and you're trying to build some of these tools, huh, you should know by now, this is bloody crowded. The whole world is there. You actually don't want to be there because most people can't tell the difference. This one, not bad. Huh? There's a lot of old school people, SES Institute, stuff like that. Everywhere else uh, is actually very vacant. You know? Nobody does this stuff. If Azar can do this for the biggest company on earth, uh, with one person and I mix it up while I'm doing the AV thing, uh, <laughs> you can. Uh, so this is, from an opportunistic point of view, <laughs> this is what the data-driven economy needs. Uh, is automation with information architecture. Governance automation is a huge one. Because no people who do this work hate their jobs. <laughs> So if you can make it more efficient, they will love you. Eh? The internal auditors, the compliance people will love you. Storytelling, getting very popular. You see there's a lot of training available for business storytelling. It's huge. Eh? This is one, if you are a good technical guy, if you can do this well, this, oops, it's, it's a good transition to get you out of technology and in front of the business people. Because a lot of technical people have a hard time telling stories. And then the, the transformation, again, if, you have, if you've been in the corporate world for the longest time, you know, you've been to hell and bad on a lot of stuff, this is a good time uh, to get paid for all this pain that you've put through. And then finally, last words, very simple, three things. Awareness, sensing. People forget. The starting point for being there, you have to be a sensing organization. Without this, nothing happens. Then, of course, obviously, you have to be learning. So once you've sent, you've got data, then you, you, you learn stuff. But this is a money slide. Uh. It is about applied analytics. Uh. I mean, you can do all the discovery that you want. If it's not applied, that means you're not solving a problem somewhere. There's no money in it. So the, and so some of these things uh, are very, very simple. If you look around, look at the masses, SMEs. Look at the problems that SMEs need to be solved. They're very, very simple problems uh, that can potentially be solved with a spreadsheet with seven <coughs> columns without a pivot table. But because it's so simple, the guys with the PhD say, this is a pedestrian problem, I don't want to solve it. That's where the money is. Uh. So you, you are out there building the software to launch a space shuttle. The three companies that need to launch the space shuttle already have the solution. Uh. The three million SMEs that can't even figure out their expense report, they need the solution. Uh. So you want to take a look at that. And again, so apply analytics is where the, the money is. If you can apply even simple things to simple problems, but you can solve it, then people will buy. And then from there, you know, you've got food in the door, you can, you can make it as complicated as you want. Okay? And basically, I'm done. <laughs> 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 Thanks. Thank you, Asar. Okay. Do we have questions for Asar? Any questions? Yes. One question. We might take one or two, and uh, we've got one more speaker sure, to go. Sure. So please go ahead. Okay. Uh, my question is: Lots of people now are talking about the big data. 
about <coughs> small data. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> In the newspapers or in the mass media, we're all talking uh, about uh, big data. Yes. But why is it that nobody talks about thick, thick data? Which means that all the data uh, can be uh, can be researched, dug deep, yep. and really, uh, really meant for the person, person, very personalized, and then translate it into application for business or let the people take action. Because if, if you look at it, again, now this is my point of view, if you look at the ecosystem, as the word big says, uh, this is a lot of scale. I can make a lot of money amassing that. And the, all, the complexity, very thick data. Literally, uh, people are talking about small numbers. Uh, a, a sample of 100, uh, and with like 3,000 data points. But a sample of 100. It's like I survey 100 people, and I collect like a few thousand data points, and that's thick. The statistics will tell you, oh, but budget of error, this is like, you know, 10 standard deviations off, you know, or some ridiculous number. Whereas if I have a sample of 3 million records, you know, so unfortunately that's where the scientific or mathematical world goes. So the only people who actually preach thick data in a big way are literally anthropology. So anybody here got anthropology training? You'll be surprised how in demand you guys are. For the longest time, you couldn't get a job. If you have a PhD, I've got to go back to either join the museum and pretend I'm Indiana Jones, or I teach at university. Today, big data companies, uh, also all the analytics companies like the SAS Institute of the World, will hire anthropologists. Because you are good at this, and I mean, anthropology is about the study of civilizations, words, things like social media analytics. Uh, when we say you suck, if you went in social media and you type, my vacuum sucks, that's an interesting context. Uh. Some software will say, that's positive because vacuums are supposed to suck. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So it takes an anthropology to understand context, civilization, and language to say, this is negative in this context. This is positive because now we have AI. Someone needs to tell the robot under these circumstances, it's not a good word. Uh. Under another circumstances, its performance measurement is actually good. So this is where a lot of thick data practices come from. The anthropologists, the ethnographics show up. And then the smart companies bring them in and marry them or pair them off with the data scientists. So now they present balance. So again, not necessarily the politically correct answer, but that's how we look at it and that's how we tend to apply them. Thank you. We can do one more, yeah? Thank you, Asa. Okay, cool, thanks. We have enough time for this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, please give us